So this is the kind of experiment that we do in the lab. I'm lying just a tiny bit, and I'll tell you how in a minute. But from looking at this picture, we can't tell. You know, just based on the way my schematic diagram of our molecules are organized, we can't tell if that's a normal liquid, a supercooled liquid, or a glass. But we can once we do the following experiment. If we poke this system, we perturb it, we poke it, and the molecules move a little bit because we poked it. And then we watch the molecules as they relax following that perturbation. We watch them in some way. We construct something that I'm going to call a correlation function. So the correlation function is basically the likelihood that the molecule is in the position that it was right after I poked it. So the correlation function can go only from 1 to 0. So right after I poke a thing, all the molecules move. And where they are right then, correlation function, everyone is 1. And by the time everyone has sort of relaxed back to where it was before we poked it, correlation function is zero. Okay, we're going to talk about that a lot. Um, and then, most experiments average over tremendous numbers of molecules. And when you do that, in a normal liquid, and you plot that, oh, oh, I forgot to said this popped up, and I didn't tell you what it means. Okay, let me tell you what that means. So I said I lied a little bit about what we do. Because we do an experiment that's almost like this, but it's even easier. We don't have to poke it at all. And that's due to something called the fluctuation dissipation theorem. That means if you poke a system and watch it relax back to equilibrium, you can actually get the same information by not poking it and just watching how the molecules fluctuate without poking it. Um, so actually, we don't poke it. We just watch what the molecules are doing. And their fluctuations tell us the same information that we would learn if we did poke it. OK, so either way, we poke it or we don't poke it, and we watch it. If it's a normal liquid, we plot this correlation function, and we learn that it follows this decay curve, an exponential decay. And it's at this little thing tau, a single time constant. So the idea is that there's some single underlying process governing the relaxation of the system. If it's a supercooled liquid, we do the exact same experiment, and we have a different functional form. It's almost the same, but it gets this little exponent beta, which goes between 0 and 1. So this is called an exponential decay, and this is called a stretched exponential decay. And so just like the liquid had this single underlying time scale, the physical meaning of this stretched exponential decay, well, it's much debated, but most people say, well, what we think it means is that there are a whole bunch of different time scales in the system, and we're averaging over all of them. We're catching all of them. Okay? So just to give you a sense of what this is going to look like, for a normal liquid, this is what the correlation, that's what that exponential curve looks like as a function of time. That relaxation goes smoothly down. But for a super cool liquid, it would look something like this. But it's not so easy to distinguish, so instead we're going to plot them in a different way. So if we just change the y-axis over here to being a logarithm, logarithm, then the normal liquid's going to look like a straight line, but the supercooled liquid's still going to look like a curved line. So that's going to be our easy way of distinguishing whether when we poke the thing it's acting like a normal liquid or not a normal liquid when it relaxes. Okay. So. I mentioned that people say that this weird stretch 